It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the show. With me in the KFG studios, certified financial planners, my friends and business partners at KFG, Josh, Greg- Josh Gregory and Kevin Corhorn. <laughs> Good to be with you, Mike. Well, it is, uh, we're winding down 2018 here, and it's a busy time of year for most of you. I hope it's been a blessed time of year for you also. And if you're like many of us, uh, you may be taking some time off, some personal time away from work uh, here as we wind down the year. And if you do, we want to help you claim a little bit of that time for your financial life. We want to help talk through some of the actions, wise actions that you could be taking during these, this last full week of the calendar year, help you marry it with a little bit of holiday cheer as well. But uh, we're talking about time-sensitive year-end planning to finish the year and start next year. That's next on the Wise Money Show. It's not nearly as geeky as it sounds. No, you can still have some fun too. This Actually, this upcoming week, I always take a little time off and I do the things that we're going to talk to you about on this list. And so uh, enjoy some eggnog and put <laughs> some you know, Christmas music on in the background and knock some of these things out for your benefit and to make 2018 a great year on the close and make 2019 a great start. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. You can, you can find us online, wisemoneyradio.com. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000. And all over social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, just search Wise Money Radio. You can submit questions that way. You can follow the show. You can like and share if you'd like. This is the season of giving. Uh, by the way, so <laughs> a couple weeks ago, we had a very special fella on the show, CPA and CFP, Ryan Fair, and we were making your year-end tax planning checklist, and we were talking about some time-sensitive tax issues that you need to get done before the end of the year, but then we're also using that time to talk about some of our favorite tax planning strategies have a change coming in 2019. So if you missed that episode, I'd point you back to it online, on the podcast, on YouTube. It was just a couple couple episodes ago. We're going to pick that conversation back up, and then we're going to blow it up, you know, kind of the 30,000-foot view. We're going to hit some of those same tax deadlines as well, but we're also going to cover all six areas of your financial life. We're going to start with things that are time sensitive, but then we'll talk about several others as well. You know, I I had a brand new client come in here recently, um, and she had some really time sensitive issues on her mind. And she was recognizing, though, that she, she wasn't fully equipped to be able to make some time sensitive decisions before the end of the year. She has some gifting that she wants to do. And as I heard her story, and she recounted Uh, you know, all the professionals in her life. She's got a CPA. She has a couple different brokers that she's worked with and an attorney. No one has helped her pull it all together into one plan where all of the different disciplines of your financial life are really informing each other. She really has a, a whole series of professionals that each have separate plans for her. And she wants to do some gifting, but she doesn't know what's the best way to do it, what's the best timing, how much can she afford to do? And, and I explained to her, uh, you know, what you're lacking here is a financial plan. And, of course, her timeline and her goals, anytime a new client invites us into their life to help coach them in, in their finances and in their, their overall life planning, uh, it's their agenda, it's their values, their priorities that drive the, the boat. But when you get to this time of the year, there are some decisions that have to get elevated above others just because uh, of time sensitivity. Yeah. In her particular case, though, she really couldn't know that she was going to take a great action or have a wise move unless she looked at, I, I was kind of recounting, it's five of the six areas that she needs to have a game plan integrated. She, she needs to uh, make sure her estate plan is up to date before she's gifting. She needs to make sure she has a tax projection and a plan there. Um, her investments, uh, we need to determine what is uh, what makes sense to be gifted, her cash flow, uh, you know, present financial position. And then ultimately, any dollars that she gives to the charities that she cares so much about 
are dollars that potentially were needed to help fund her retirement. Mm. So she needed to have a retirement projection. So, you know, we're, we're putting the uh, full core press on. We're, we're working very quickly here to try to get some answers before the end of the year. But before we even dive into all the different strategies that maybe you should be considering between now and the end of the year or the start of next year, I just want you to recognize, man, you're not going to know which of these strategies really make sense unless you are considering them in the context of a financial plan. All six areas of your financial plan, and they're all working together. Yes. I mean, that is the right place to start because these ideas, let's just call them good ideas. Mm -hmm. Whether they're great ideas depends on how they fit in your entire financial life. But I'm thinking about the client that Josh is working with, and and I take that to everyone. Wouldn't it be nice to know where you are? Is is your retirement and the other financial goals that you have, are your financial goals funded? Are they yeah. overfunded or are they underfunded? Because if they're overfunded, now we've got some gifting decisions and some other types of decisions. But if they're underfunded, you'd want to be very careful about any decisions that you make. And the problem is, in a vacuum, almost anything makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it makes sen in a vacuum, it makes sense to fully fund my retirement plan. It makes sense to give all this money to my kids or to my church or to a charity. And I would encourage you to not operate your finances in a vacuum. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's hit some of these time-sensitive items that are, should be on your financial planning checklist as we approach the end of 2018. I, I'll share the first one. We talked about it the entire last episode. We blogged about it on the Wise Money blog as well. Make sure your charitable donations are in before 1231. There is a hard deadline on that. And for us, Cindy and I have gotten into a habit of uh, you, you know that uh, that clothes pile you have in your bedroom, you know, where you just throw all your clothes and they just sit there. Um, I love doing that. Cindy absolutely hates it. it I'm bringing this up because that's what I was that, gonna say. The one that Lori hates. It drives her crazy. I think even Casey Hendrickson there posted on Facebook where someone put a star on the top of it and they made it sort of the Christmas <laughs> tree. We got that going on on my side of the bed in the bedroom. And uh, here's here's what we've just said to each other. We're going to take that stuff to good, to Goodwill. If, if I'm not wearing it, if it's not being recycled, we're taking it to Goodwill at the end of the year. Just know you got to get that stuff in by December 31st. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. Uh, you know, one of the other uh, decision points that many of you have come to in, in recent weeks, maybe at work uh, you've hit an open enrollment period with uh, employee benefits. Maybe you're making final decisions on what your health insurance is going to look like next year or how much you're going to contribute to your retirement. If that's not a decision that should be made within the context of a financial plan, then I don't know what is, yeah. right? I mean, it hits so many different areas, and you have to make those decisions quickly here. Uh, other things, uh, if 529 plan contributions. We're getting late in the year. If that's not in the mail already, then stop listening right now and go get it done. <laughs> If that's part of your plan, no, if you're you, not sure, then you need a plan. You can keep listening. Just do it right. <laughs> just do it. Do it right after. It needs to be in the account though by twelve thirty one, not postmarked. Yes. So when you talk about the mail, yeah, it does need to be in the mail now. That's right. It's got to be in the account. So I'll, I'll give you another one. You've heard us talk about Roth conversions. Those have to be done before the end of the year. That's one of two ways that you're allowed to get money into a Roth IRA. You can take IRA dollars and turn them into Roth, but it has to be done before December 31st. The second one was a contribution, and we shared in that uh, show with Ryan Fair that you can actually still do that as late as April 15th if you want to contribute to a Roth IRA. Just beware, with, with the conversion strategy, if I'm moving money from my IRA to my Roth IRA, I'm making it taxable. And it used to be you could get a mulligan on that, and mm -hmm. there's no longer that, – that was taken away for some unknown reason in the 11th hour out of the new tax code that simplified our tax situation <laughs> and, and made, made it so you can file your taxes on a postcard. I can't sure. say that without like grinding my teeth, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's a few other time sensitive and a lot of them uh, relate to your taxes, time sensitive items that you need to check off on your year end checklist for 2018. So we're going to hit those, but then also there's just some other things in your financial life that right now it's not time sensitive, but right now is a great time to consider. We're going to hit all of that and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. 
so do we, we need probably to came in a little under there, Casey, because I forgot to pause this immediately, right. but I think we were close enough. No, you're fine. Keep okay. Pressure. And you have it listed where you're going to smooth up the video? Sweetness. Um, so are we going to hit the rest of these then? I'd like to. And then okay, I don't so know if there were any Which others. ones can we, Which ones are done? Roth conversion, 529. Yep. So the first, the first four are done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is the the tax loss or gain harvesting. This that is a target rich environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and I also think well, we've got to hit it on the program, not just for YouTube, but. There's going to be some surprises this year in capital gain distributions. I, I just, you know, if you've held, if a fund manager has had, held Apple for 10 years and now all of a sudden Apple won't even tell you how many phones they're selling and that stock's down 20%, yeah. you, the fund manager might say, yeah, time to trim a little bit of this back. There's been so much volatility that I would expect fund managers are trimming and and making some adjustments and turnover is going to be higher this year so we got to hit that too and i added a couple items to the list Good. too so people paid you guys want to 200 hit ones? people paid 220 dollars for apple stock that's not you saw that microsoft is worth as much as apple now right really i no i didn't yeah. it just came out this week so i was like whoa how'd that happen hmm. Hmm. a 20 percent drop that's how it happened. When your company is worth more than all but eight hmm. or ten countries, or no, it's 18 countries or something like that. Hmm. When your company is worth more than that and it sees a 20% decline, yeah. Man, I feel awful. Let's go buy iPhones. <laughs> we, let's help that's, we can help that stock. Okay, here we go. All right, let's, let's do it. Are you making your year-end financial planning checklist? Are you checking it twice? I know. Sorry, that's cheesy. But you knew I was going to say it at least at least once. Thanks for being with us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn. I want to say thank you to the attorneys at Ledoux, Curran, and Keen. If you have business needs, if you need your estate plan done, if you have legal questions, reach out to them. They can handle just about everything. I also want to say thank you to First State Bank for sponsoring the content of today's program. Thank you very much. If you have a comment, if you have a question, if you have a need, we are here for you. We'd love to address it, help you, or talk about it on an upcoming show. 574-222-2000. You can call or text 574-222-2000. Wisemoneyradio.com is how you find us online and social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. I don't know what else is in these days with those kids, but we're on it. Just search Wise Money radio. Okay, so we're talking about the time-sensitive items on that year-end financial planning checklist. Some of these things need to be addressed by December 31st. Let's keep going with that list, Kevin. So one of the big things, if you are looking, you, you've got two, typically people have two different pots of money, if you will. You have a retirement plan money, and those dollars if you buy or sell things within those accounts, those are tax deferred. So it's not going to have an impact on line 13 on your tax return, which I think it, it's line 13, but I think you're right, it, yeah. there, there's a line there on your tax return for capital gains or capital losses. So it's not the money in your retirement plan bucket. It's the money outside of your retirement plan bucket. So if you've got an investment account, if you bought Apple stock this year for $220 and it's down considerably from that, for instance. Or you thought you were buying GE cheap. Right. And you <laughs> didn't realize how cheap you, you it could get. You guys are hurting a lot of feelings right now. No, I'm, I'm listen. Listen. It's real. Those are real. I feel it. I feel it. I know. And so and, and so, can I just tell all of you who are tempted to catch the falling dagger, don't. Yeah, it's dangerous. Don't. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you just don't. Okay. So, but here's what, here's what you want to do. Depending on when you invested, even when you invested this year, it's possible that you bought a stock or a mutual fund on a high, and it's come off that high. 
you may want to reset your basis in that. So if, I, for instance, let's just take a stock. I bought it at $220. I sold it uh, for 178 The difference between what I bought and sold it for would be a loss if I bought it for 220 and sold it for 178 So that goes to my tax return. If I, if I lost... Pretend the, the the difference in my scenario is $30,000. I can use $3,000 of that on my tax return this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I basically, in essence, have 10 years' worth of losses to work off on my tax returns, as long as I don't have any other gains to offset that. And and I want to talk about gains. Casey Hendrickson, you guys know and love him, and he helps us produce the show, actually just shared with all this fun news we're talking about with the volatility that uh, Apple stock wants, you know, a trillion dollars. Rang that bell earlier this year. And now, just a couple weeks ago, same value as Microsoft. I mean, that is just staggering how quickly. I mean, we're, we're seeing, we've seen what risk looks like and feels like if if you're nervous about investing and you think gosh you guys haven't talked about it enough well we're giving it it's ju- it's the right amount of space within your financial life we will be doing our um 2018 recap and 2019 forecast coming up here in a couple of weeks but a lot's been going on and and but today we're talking about how it relates to your finances if you've owned mutual funds outside of these tax sheltered accounts, so outside of your 401k and IRA and Roth IRA, you might know, but you might not, that the mutual funds don't pay taxes. You might not know that. Mm. And so, but they're still buying and selling individual, you know, securities inside that mutual fund. And so even if you just held it, it's possible that mutual fund manager said, shoot, We've rode this ride for Apple stock for a long time. It's getting a little jittery. We're going to sell a little bit of this. And you've held the stock the entire time, but because they sold, or the mutual fund the entire time, but because they sold it, now there's capital gains that need to be kicked out. And someone's got to pay those tax. The shareholders pay those taxes. So that's called a capital gain distribution. And if you, if you feel like that's unfair, let me throw another twist at you. They don't even tell you what that's going to be. They announce it on, you know, New Year's Eve for most of these funds, and it's far too late for you to do anything about it. So a lot of people, I think, in a very turbulent and strange investing year are going to get possibly some tax surprises. It's one of the reasons why for weeks now we keep on hammering on this point that towards the end of the year you need to be doing active tax planning. You need to be proactive. Don't get to the end of the year and then, you know, work with your CPA to um, do an accounting of what happened in 2018. No, you have influence on what your tax picture is going to be if you're thinking ahead, if you're planning in all areas of your, your financial life. Another area where, you know, you just need to be proactive, and maybe this one's not time sensitive. It doesn't feel time sensitive because there's not a hard deadline looming right now. Um the, the, those of you that are sending kids off to college, the FAFSA has been open for almost three months now. Yeah. And you may not have jumped on that because, uh, let's face it, we all get busy, right? And that's one of the reasons why we open this show, reminding you that if you're going to have some time away from work, if you're going to have some downtime, devote part of that to improving your financial life. And this might be one of those checklist type items that you need to get done while you have the time to get it done. You no longer have to wait until your taxes are prepared because you're using uh, data from a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. 2017 returns is what you'd be looking at right now, and uh, and you can access that. Another one, some of you may have been considering as we've approached the end of the year whether or not long-term care insurance is appropriate in your financial life. And this is one that every year when the clock strikes midnight on December 31st, Here in Indiana, some of the rules surrounding long-term care policies, they change. And this is something that you need to educate yourself on. We have past episodes where we've talked about the Indiana Partnership Plan for for long-term care insurance. Begin educating yourself so that you can make a wise choice on this um, so that we don't burn through another year in 2019 and you're still kind of scratching your head saying, "Ah, should I or shouldn't I? That's wise, Josh. I, I, I enjoyed listening to both of those. It's just this is just wise advice. It's too late to do the long term care right now. You can't get an application, get it in, get it approved before the end of the year. But you need to know, at least in Indiana, that 
your how much you need to buy in order to get some of the benefits goes up every yeah. calendar year. That's that's great to point out. Hey, I'd like to circle back though, real quick. We're talking about uh, tax lost harvesting and and capital gains and whatnot. Just remember, if you are in the 12% tax bracket, your capital gains rate is zero. So you actually might want to harvest some gains if you if, if it makes sense. We're, all this talk about loss, you might want to harvest some gains. Yes, and so and I have clients that I'm working with where they were gifted stock. They're in the, the 12% tax bracket. It used to be 15. Now it's 12%. And so every year we're making sure we sell enough of that highly appreciated stock because about 25 cents of every dollar is basis. So 75 cents is gain. They have a ton, a ton, a ton of gains. So every year we're taking as much gain as we can in the 12% tax bracket, which means capital gains wise, it's zero. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've got one more to share. That is time sensitive, and it's very time sensitive. The the, the it might have already passed for you, but I'm talking to just a, f- a few of you, a few of you who are ready to dislike me very much. <laughs> if you have one more paycheck that's going to land in 2018, should you give all of that to your 401k? All of it, and for some people. This year, I was just meeting with someone this week where this happened. We did a tax projection, and in order to get a certain credit, they needed to be below a certain number. And I done the – my team, we did the tax projection, and we got to the point where we said, yeah, no, you're good. You're good. And in the meeting, he said, "Nah, I'm getting a little bonus. And it's just a couple thousand, Mm -hmm. but it's going to push him over that limit. Mm -hmm. And then the tax credit's gone. It's mm-hmm. one of those sort of all or nothing ones. There's not a lot of those, but it's right. gone. Mm-hmm. And so I said, listen. And actually, he got the conclusion himself, said, I need to put my last paycheck into the 401k. If you've got a bonus coming this last week or whatever, get in there and do some tax planning. The only way to do that now and have that income show up for your 401k contributing there is it's got to come out of your paycheck. All right. There's several other timely financial planning issues that you need to address. We're going to help you make that list and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. So I don't know if we need to hit this or if this is just bonus content for the YouTube channel, but really, if you own a small business or you do your payroll and you haven't fully funded your 401k, you can do, you could do a special payroll. Right. Mm-hmm. Bonus yourself. You yeah, could you could bonus money. yourself. So that'd be one one thing. And then the other thing is encourage people to understand can I put my bonus in my 401k? Some companies you can. It's it's dependent on the plan. Some right. some plans you can, some plans you cannot. I was just me- if you have a plan where you cannot, feel free to call us at <laughs> right. <laughs> that needs to be fixed. I was right. to talk to you about Right. Your plan. Well, because I, I just, I, I had met with a client earlier in the year, and he said, well, I get a year in bonus. I just don't know what it's going to be. My cash flow works perfectly the way it is, so I don't want to adjust what I'm putting into my 401k. And so I said, well, find out. But he didn't need the bonus. Yeah. So I mm-hmm. said, well, find out how much of that bonus you can put in if you can. And he found out he could put all the bonus in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. All right, we are shifting, so it's, uh, we're halfway through, it's third segment, and we're shifting to the non-time-sensitive but still timely. And we'll probably do one segment of this, and then hopefully there will so be... So we don't, we don't, we want to be done with the 401k? I think so, because yeah, that cool. yeah, it could sound a little bit like, oh, business owners, again, get to do whatever they want, or small business owner. I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't hit it. Okay, that's cool. We are encouraging you, if you've got some time over the holidays where you're not working or you're just lounging, watching the snow fall outside, encourage you to take some intentional time, be proactive, and think about your finances and how you can intentionally improve your finances for 2018, leading into 2019. We're making that checklist for you. Thank you very much. For being with us, this is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike. Here with me in the KFG studios, Josh and Kevin. 
Thank you to Bethel College Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett with REMAX 100 for making the Wise Money Show possible. If you have any questions, let me just remind you, you can find us online, wisemoneyradio.com. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000, 574-222-2000. And lastly, we're on all the main social media. You can submit questions that way. You can catch up on other content that way or just like the show, share the show, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and you can connect with us that way as well. So we're taking some time to talk about, all right, what needs to be on your radar this time of year on your finances? Some things have a natural deadline of December 31st. We just hit those really, really time-sensitive items. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff that deals with all six areas of your financial life that is just timely. It's timely to hit. Some of these, you know, it just wouldn't work to hit this in you know, on May 4th or whatever. It's appropriate to hit it right now. I've got a full list, guys. I don't know about you, but what are some of those items that should be on that list? Well, I'll tell you what's the, the, the top thing on my list is to call my financial planner. If I, if I don't have my next meeting scheduled with my financial planner, call and get it scheduled. If I don't have a financial planner, I would find one. And if you're going to work with a financial planner, make sure they're a certified financial planner. And that they do comprehensive financial planning. In the six areas of CFP. I just met someone who's been working with a broker in town for a number of years, and uh, she revealed to me that she hadn't actually seen this person in over four years. And Mm -hmm. she referred to him as a financial advisor, but then kind of confessed, really all we do is talk about investments. And... You know, I I agree with you. I'm glad that you started there, Kevin. I didn't even put that on my list because it should be driving the whole list, right? Your relationship with your financial planner. I got to just make one other item. I mean, as you mentioned that, I I was meeting with someone who wanted a second opinion. And right there on their statement as I was looking at it, um, the broker, the financial advisor's name was comma. Uh, MBA, comma, CFP. And so you're like, okay, well, they must know their stuff. They're not doing comprehensive financial planning. She's been contributing to her Roth, maxing it out. That's great work. Look at her taxes. Yeah, she's not allowed to contribute to a Roth. Oh, my. Right? So, And there's some penalties to that. So great credentials, probably great person not doing comprehensive financial planning. Right. And because we're almost at Christmas time, if you are lacking creativity as it comes to gifting for your children, what are you going to put under the tree? Put under the tree a certificate to um, meet with a financial planner. Give your kids the gift of financial planning. It's been one of the best gifts ever. Lindsay, we got to create one of those certificates and put it on the Facebook page. Anyway, I, yes. I, but I, I digress. So the other thing, and it's it's um, it fits in line with sort of foundational for your financial life. Josh, I totally agree. I didn't have that on my list either because it does. It drives the list. If you don't have a financial planner, a year-end financial planning checklist is just, that sounds like wah, 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 wah. But so the other thing, foundational to your financial life, and it's just timely. I do it this time of year every year. Update your budget. Update your budget. Right now is the time when you're thinking about the year ahead. I've got a great friend. Actually, it's how I met Kevin, who's getting married down in Georgia. I want to be there. I want to be there. And so financially, how are we going to do it? And because for us, it's not just paying to get there. It's paying for someone to watch the kids, too. Gosh, they are expensive. <laughs> but you know, you, it, it, but you might have gotten a, you might have gotten a little pay change. You might need to increase your withholdings. You might need to make some other things that impact your monthly cash flow. Now's the time to build that budget for twenty eight or twenty nineteen. Tell me if you've ever uh, faced a diet and thought to yourself, you know, the ideal time to start a diet is a few weeks down the road right? It's never today is the day to start the diet. It's always tomorrow or another day. But this is one of those cases where, you know what, there are some really ideal times to start a new budget or to fix your budget. I love doing that at the start of either a new calendar year or a new month or anytime there's a material change in your financial life, in your income, that sort of thing. You need to rework the budget on a regular basis. 
And starting the new year, I, I love that as one of the top things on your list. One of the, um, the additional items that I like to do this time of year is just take a snapshot of where you're at financially and compare it to the same time a year ago and the same time a year before that. Begin to build up some history where you can look backwards and see how far you've come. This is one of the most important disciplines of financial planning because somewhere along the line, you're going to be trying to achieve some goals that are just going to take a long time. I I met with a client here just recently, and we had there were all kinds of high fives happening in the meeting because they were going to knock out six goals in one year. Whoa. It was awesome. Six out of 12 goals in one year. It's exciting. But what about number seven? What if number seven on their list takes them five years to achieve? And you can get discouraged along the way because you haven't had any of those regular wins again. And one of the ways that you can throw off discouragement is by measuring backwards. Look backwards in your life and see how far you've come because there are going to be stretches of time where it just feels like you're treading water or we've been making progress here. We haven't had any wins lately. No, the win is happening because your financial life is getting stronger. You're making progress towards those goals that are long term. But you can only know that. You can only see that when you look backwards. You have to have the data at your disposal to see it. Oftentimes, you can only feel that if you're looking at the uh, at things objectively because your feelings suggest, I'm not gaining. Well, that means you're gapping out, as a friend of ours shares. That is, if, if, if That seems like a simple exercise. No, it's a habit. It's a discipline. I just will throw a little kudos to our team that we do that for, for clients. Our clients, mm-hmm. every single year, we build that snapshot for them and have it right next to last year's, which is right next to the year before, to the year before, to the year before, so you can see that history, that intentional. All right, let me go back to that. Let me. It's going to circle with that and with the budget. I was just talking to a fan of the show, Chris, if you're listening, hello. Now, right now, increase your 401k contributions 1%. And if you think, oh, 1% is for chumps, then just do 2%. Increase it. <laughs> increase it right now. And it because it's not, you're not even going to feel a noticeable difference. But with Chris and their situation, and I know this is going to sound familiar, you're doing 5% to get the match. And you've heard us talk about fifteen percent, and you and you that sort of makes you choke. I get five to fifteen percent, that'll crush me, and it will, and you'll hate it. So just go from five to seven, and then next year go from seven to eight, and the year after that go from eight to ten. Do that. Yeah. Right now. Some of you can also sacrifice the entire pay raise that you was announced to you recently. Maybe your your wages are going up, your salary is increasing. And, you know, you're, you're actually in a good groove with your cash flow. You've got a budget that's working. So this additional money could be captured for goal achievement purposes. And if that's the case, capture it day one of the pay raise. Increase your contributions to match that as well. Well, well I can see Kevin's about to say something, so I'm going to just keep talking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but speaking to that, no, now is the time that you set next year's goals. Sure. Set your goals for next year. And I believe it's our very next episode of Wise Money. We're going to talk to you about about our goal setting process. So if you're lacking some creativity or even a framework to do that, we're going to provide that to you uh, next week. But now is the time to set your short and long term goals. Kevin, do you have a second to chime in? Well, I would agree. And again, your goals, I'm going back to the 401k. Anything Again, as we've said before, in a vacuum makes sense. So make sure that's within the context of one plan, not several different plans from several different professionals. One plan and do – because maybe instead of the 1% or 2%, you should be doing 5%. Right. So I would want to know for sure. You want clarity and confidence, and you want to work with a professional who's bringing creativity. That's right. I, I, I don't know about you. My list is only half checked off here. So we've got several other things that we need to add to your year-end 2018 financial planning checklist. And gosh, I'm still hoping we've got a couple great questions that are very timely. I'm hoping we can get to those too. So that and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. YouTube. There's no way we're getting the listener questions. I'm sorry. Yes, we can. I hope so, but gosh, this is so good. If you just... say I can't, then we can't. We old, can. Can do attitude. Old man can't is dead. I buried him myself. Well, I got some good stuff we got to talk about. 
Okay, we're, so this... we're still going to do some shows in 2019, right? <sighs> we can talk about them then. So, okay, like... so just, uh, just we're going into... Four segment, Land of the Plane. I know. Where did the third one go? I know. I talked all of it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the entire ten Wake minutes talking. Wake me up for the fourth one. Yeah. Okay, maybe we can't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were in the third segment. <laughs> Casey? Actually, old man can't just came back to life. Yikes. Yeah, we're going into the last segment. Right <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Mike. YouTube, YouTubers, there's no way. <laughs> All right. Maybe that's We can the... try. Okay, I know. We're, we'll give there it is a, no uh, try. We can do. All right. By the way, YouTube, go watch the, uh, the video of the fight between the Atlantic City mayor and a city councilman in a parking garage outside of a Target. What? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let Casey's me... Casey's not if, even if, listening if, to the you, show right yeah, now. If you couldn't hear Casey behind the microphone and camera over there, uh, here's what he said. You should be following Casey Hendrickson on Facebook and be listening to his show because he talks about some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, I'm assuming you've already shared that. Uh, I'm getting ready to share it right now. Okay. Yeah, the mayor of Atlantic City in a brawl oh with goodness. a city councilman in a casino parking garage oh late at night. Five, five people are involved. Looks like the mayor got beat up, too. Pretty bad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Have you seen that that um, the video of the mayor of South Bend? And Never mind. No, I haven't. Okay. Nope. All right. We will not rush, but we'll go as quickly as we can. Let's do it. All right. Have you set and listed out your 2019 goals by now? I mean, if you haven't done it by now, now we're encouraging to do that, you to do that right now. We're going to talk about a formal process that we help clients through. We're going to talk about that next week or the following coming up. Um, but now's the time we need to start thinking about those goals. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. If you've missed anything, it's really been about building your year-end 2018 financial planning checklist. All the things that you just need to carve out a little bit of time for and attend to, at least mentally or hopefully within the context of an overall financial plan. Should I do this? This one has a deadline. Should I get this done? Should I not? What adjustments do I need to make? And um, we're making that list for you. If you've missed anything, you can catch every episode on podcast iTunes, Google Play, wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe to it. Just search Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. You can also subscribe to and listen and actually watch every episode of uh, the Wise Money Show on our YouTube channel. You can search and sub subscribe to it. You can share episodes that you like. Someone else, you hear something, you say, they need to hear that. You can just shoot it right over to them. Lastly, on the website, wisemoneyradio.com, every episode's right there for online listening, online streaming. So if you're at work and just want to have it on in the background, you can go to that page, wisemoneyradio.com, and listen that way as well. Okay, we've addressed all of the really, really time-sensitive items that need to be on your financial radar right now. But there's a few other that are just timely. And I, I want to talk about this in the spirit of goals. How's Christmas going to be? for you this year. How's Christmas been? Stressful? Usually, I can't help you with the in-laws. I talked about this on a Wise Money Minute, <laughs> how this is one of the most stressful times of years. And and listen, yeah, I don't help with in-laws or, you know, uh, kids that are coming home for college and spend their entire time with their friends or in their room. You want family time and they don't give it to you. I can't help with any of that. But if the finances are stressful, I can help you with that. Start thinking of Christmas 2019 right now. I, I've told you this before. Cindy and I, I don't know exactly what the number is because it's a com combined with a couple other things. But we are setting money aside weekly. Every Thursday, money automatically goes right out of the checking and goes into something called delayed spending. And it's that account that we use for birthdays, we use for vacations, we use for anniversary gifts, and we use for Christmas. And it's just on autopilot. It's on autopilot, and, and so I'd encourage you, if, if there was some stress this year financially, start that habit. 
of delayed spending and start setting money aside for next year's Christmas. Absolutely. And on a monthly basis, you're, you're turning Christmas into uh, no longer a lump sum, stressful amount of cash that you want to come up with to bless family members. Instead, you're squirreling away dollars throughout the year so that as you approach the holiday next year, you have the cash on hand. And it's not just Christmas 2019, as you said, it's vacation 2019 and home project 2019 and fill in the blank. So I, I love that one. That's good. Yeah, and I think one of the things that you might want to do is set aside some time. If you are single and all by yourself, m- m- schedule a date with your financial planner. Yeah. And if you are if you're a couple, schedule a date with your spouse and go talk about what should we be focused on financially for 2019. Ask yourself the question, what needs to happen both personally and professionally over the next three years for us to be satisfied with our progress? And think about these things. And I have found that the, that your fi- the financial component in your life can be a huge distraction, and statistics bear this out, but it can be a huge distraction to intimacy in a marriage. So the way that you do that, each conversation, you're either going to be tearing down the wall between you and your spouse, or you're going to be building the wall between you and your spouse. And it'd be very easy for two people to have different financial priorities. So it's really important that you work together to get to some sort of an agreement on what should our financial priorities be and how are we going to achieve those things. And if you commit those goals to writing and you can you can take the financial component of your life into the objective realm and get it out of the subjective realm, I feel this way, I'm thinking this yeah. way, whatever, I, I would really encourage you to to invest that time. Because you have you're gonna have some time off likely. You're either going to spend that time or invest that mm-hmm. time. That's why And I told I told my son that he was just home on leave from the army. I said, Joshua, you got three weeks. You're going to spend it and have nothing to show for it, or you're going to invest it. Your choice. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a good segue into another checklist item. It's related to investments. Uh, When you have some time off of work, you have some downtime, one of the just mechanical aspects of being a wise manager of your resources is periodically to look at your portfolio and rebalance it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that, you know, especially in a year like this where, Uh, It's been volatile. There have been some great times and some ugly times throughout the year. And not all of your investments have performed exactly the same way. Uh, You guys know that my uh, some of my history is in horticulture and landscaping and everything. So I'll give you an analogy. If, If you were to plant a flower garden with perennials that come back every year, what I can tell you about that garden is that over time, some things are going to thrive and other things are going to struggle could be soil conditions, could just be a drought we had, who knows. Some some species are just more uh, invasive. They just spread. Rabbits. The same, yeah, <laughs> exactly. The rabbits <laughs> like the daisies. and uh, the, um, the, the point, though, is the same thing is happening within your portfolio. There are some areas of your uh, investments that are crowding out others because they've grown like crazy and others have struggled. One of the most disciplined things that you can do is go cut back, you know, uh, prune out or remove some of the areas that have grown too much and buy into the things, plant more of the stuff that's actually cheap right now. The oldest adage in investing is buy low, sell high. And so rebalancing your portfolio is a way of selling off some of the stuff that is high to buy the stuff that's cheap. It's a bargain right now. And uh, just going through that discipline and having that be a part of your habit can actually improve your rate of return over time. Yeah, that's well said. Great analogy. Anything else? Yeah, I, and I would just say if you're if you're looking at at your investments and you're doing the rebalance, if you're doing that in the retirement plans, it's it's a non-event. Be careful about doing it in the non-retirement plans right. because of the tax ramifications. And if you're looking at your investments and you're in the land in between, you started on your financial goals years ago, but you still have years to go, and you're looking and you're getting a little discouraged, remember, you're growing an oak tree. And I can't tell you how many clients I talk to because of the volatility in this past year, they watched the market go up 10 or 12%, and they said, yes, 
I am a great investor. And then they watched it go down 15% and said, oh, this is terrible. Someone well, did something to me, actually. Is what they did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great investor yeah. versus someone. Anyway. Right. So anyway, I just remind them, you're, you're growing an oak tree. You're not growing corn or soybeans, right? Corn is knee high by the 4th of July, and it's eight feet tall by September, and you're harvesting 150 bushels an acre in October or November. You're not growing corn or soybeans. For your long-term goals, you're growing an oak tree. So just be patient. And if you are a long-term investor and you're looking and you don't like how your portfolio looks, the great thing is if you're buying in systematically over time, you're winning. Yeah. You want to buy the stuff on sale. Think Black Friday. Josh, we have time? for. Well, I'll throw one more onto our checklist. Okay. And the only reason it even comes to my mind is because I was reviewing our estate plan uh, recently, and I noticed that we signed several years ago on December 29th. Why December 29th? That's just when I had some time to meet with the attorney, ah, right? Yeah. So this is one of those things that, you know, we talk about deadlines, and this one literally is a deadline, obviously. It's one that maybe you don't have to get done this week. But it needs to be in your plan. And obviously, you know that we're going to tell you your estate plan needs to be part of your overall financial plan. So if you don't have that financial plan in place, get that first. Josh. But when it's in place, your estate plan should not be put off and put off and put off. That's officially the worst pun on the Wise Money Show. I, you, get the medals, you get the medals for the most wise comments, but that's the worst <laughs> pun. I'm going to apologize to all of you listening You're for welcome. that. <laughs> Merry All Christmas. right. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Have a wonderful and safe holiday with your family. Be safe out there on the roads, but enjoy it. Find some joy. Find some joy. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, and all of us at KFG, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.